a very good morning. I, I can say a very good afternoon to all. And at the outset, I would like to thank AIOS and especially uh, my seniors of GSI for giving me this opportunity. So straight away coming to my topic about talking about the assessing glaucoma progression on OCD. So before that, let's see that why this is so important that we need to see the disease progression in time. That's because when we look at the glaucoma burden projected through this systemic review and meta-analysis as projected by Tham et al., it is, it, was, it is estimated that by 2040, 66.83 million people worldwide are going to get affected by glaucoma, currently jumping uh, from 46.24 in 2020. That's a huge burden on the society because that's a permanent blinding condition. So, as we know that the goal of glaucoma therapy is control of IOP alongside, we have to keep a good quality of life, keeping in mind the progressive nature of the disease. And that is how the importance of identifying the disease progression comes in time. So the need of the R is to identify the progression or the disease as early as possible and as accurate as possible with the help of the quantitative and objective imaging devices, which are most sensitive to detect the supple changes when we call it as progression. So if we are so clear in our mind, then what is the challenge? The challenge comes when we have to race against the time. That is the ongoing age-related ganglion cell loss is already there. And the uh, adequate number of objective and sensitive tests for diagnosis is not there. And last but not the least would be the variable rate and pattern of progression needs to be kept in time all the time. So let's talk about the ideal test. What could be one? The one which can clearly differentiate between a test variability from progression and is sensitive to localized supple changes. Because as we all know that in glaucoma when it comes to the damage, the first thing is the RNFL disc and then last comes the visual field defects. So out of the different techniques, today we are going to talk about the imaging that's OCT detecting the progression. But before that, let's have few lines about the disc progression, how to assess that. And for that, for evaluation of disc changes, there are five rules, why five points, which we have to keep in mind, in which we start with the identifying the scleral ring that gives the detection of the borders. And last but not the least would be the disc hemorrhage. Like, likewise, in this particular case, as we can see that over a period of eight years, there is broadening of RNFL and increase in beta zone parapapillary atrophy. So considering the limitation in mind, that is a subjective method, let's talk about the revolutionary change in the field of glaucoma diagnostic armamentarium. That's with the help of OCT. Because of faster scan rates and accurate segmentation of the anatomical boundaries, it gives us an improved visualization of the smaller details. And the progression can, detect, can be detected in the form of a GPA, that's guided progression analysis. And this is a typical printout which the machine gives when it comes to uh, assessing the progression, where with the help of the optic disc cubes, the machine compares the RNFL thickness measurement over a period of time and signifies it with the help of the data or the colors if it is there is any statistical change, significant change is there. Likewise, when we talk about the visual field, we say event and trend analysis. Similarly, here also, we can divide a progression into two groups. Could be an event analysis and a trend analysis as well. In event analysis, basically, the topmost picture, the blue picture, shows the RNFL thickness map, where we can see where we can see that these two are the baselines and these two are the subsequent follow-up visits. The machine compares these two baselines with the subsequent follow-up visits and this is the thickness change map where you can see again the two baseline and if the change is detected for the first time, it is marked in yellow and then it goes for the red. And you always remember this data, that if there is any change of five micron in a sector, it is suspicious of progression, and seven to eight is suggestive of progression. Only drawback is that because of the lesser number of scans, it is prone to inaccuracies. Now talking about the trend analysis. Now trend analysis, what the machine does is, that it gives you a slopey manner, slope where you can just again detect the change over a period of time, and again this is detected with the help of the color coding. And also you can see that it detects the superior, inferior, and also the average RNFL thickness over a period of time. 
Now uh, it also includes the average CDR progression graph. So to, in all we can uh, concise uh, say that this tick mark denotes that there is a focal change. This tick mark denotes that there is a broader focal change and this tick mark denotes that there is a uh, uh, diffuse change when you, it comes to assessment of the RNFL changes. And not talking about this particular uh, objective me method, but I was saying that there should be some numbering system to that. So as you can see here that the numbers are going down from 80 to 65. And, and, and again, just to remind you all that the RNFL decrease of 5 is suspicion of progression and a decrease of 7 to 8 is suggestive of progression. If we keep this in mind and see this picture, definitely we can say that a patient is progressing, keeping other factors in mind, which may cause an artifact due to progression. So while conclusion, I would just like to highlight a case here, which as we can see that they were corresponding, uh, there was a disc damage and the corresponding field change. But we know that the corresponding field changes, they only come when there is loss of 40% exonal cells. But here you can see that how beautifully it was seen and picked up with the help of the OCT before it came on the visual field. So this is the importance when you talk about uh, correlating the disc structure and the function. So in the end, I would, this is my last slide, uh, sharing the some clinical pearls with you all, that clinical pictures should always be correlated Different machine images cannot be interchanged or compared. Age-rated thinning should always be kept in mind and rate of change in progression is suggested to be larger in suspects and eyes with mild glaucoma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shweta. I request uh, one of our panelists to please sum up for the audience how useful you have been finding OCT for your patients in assessing progress because traditionally we have been using visual field. So uh, have you started using OCT for your patients to assess progress? OCT is definitely going to change our uh, assessment of progress. Uh, definitely going to change our perspective because uh, it is a subjective method and it is non-invasive also and it is easy easier for the patient. Only thing in our setup, patients have to be um, uh, repeatedly told that they should use the same machine. Usually they do. Uh, OCT is one sector, then another hospital would they go and do the thing and they wanted, they want to um, compare those one report with the other. That is the main problem. Otherwise, the, the, um, very beautifully the machines have been designed so that uh, it progress in time is quicker. But it has to be straight side, it has to be with the same machine. And uh, we have to have a good conduct, uh, for, uh, conduct uh, examination so that to rule out the artifact. Panda, so you like to add something? I think the topic is covered very beautifully in a yes. short given time. I think the importance of OCT is being recognized more and more. And of course, they are complementary as is, is being already highlighted. Uh, so OCT does play a more, you know, more, you, as we understand more about the OCT and use it more, we are getting more proficient in interpreting the images and how we correlate uh, in the clinical picture. But I think essentially. Thank you, sir.